Hi, welcome. It's Meredith. I'm here with our message for Tuesday, the 13th of April, 2021. We're using my favorite of favorites, Bonefire Tarot, for our message today. Our cards, our overall theme cards for the energy atmosphere, what's unfolding there. Let's get into it. Our first is... You know, how quaint is that? We finished yesterday's reading with the Knight of Coins, and here he is again starting today's reading. So the journey does go on. <laughs> so we've turned the page. We start out with this beautiful knight. I love this knight. You know he's one of my favorites. I say it every time we turn him over. But it's because he knows how to savor, and he cherishes every moment. He... He really does have uh, a good, how do I want to phrase that? He's really good at seeing the whole picture. I would say that he is the bird's eye view knight in tarot. You know, he, he does have the, the full picture and he doesn't move on until he's got the full picture. So I really do like that about him and he doesn't rush there's there's no rushing this night at all. So his energy is representative of our ability to move through this energy atmosphere in a way that is slow, steady, yet progressive for us. So where is he going? What is he doing and what is he moving? Is it, these are all good questions because knights move energy between cards and I feel that there's no need to pull a card to see where he came from. We know where he came from. He came from yesterday's reading. <laughs> so what's he? where's he taking it all? Our next card is the Ten of Coins and fantastic. Tens are about fulfillment and there's no rushing fulfillment here is the message that I get, especially with this particular Ten. You know, it is the legacy card in tarot. It is what we have to pass on. It's what we leave behind. But it's also what we share while we're here. And this is a multi-generational type of card. It's how we pass energies, thoughts, ideas, inspirations onto our family, our family of friends. And it isn't just about material or property. It's so much more about what is our legacy of love? How is that spoken? How did we speak that and express that? And what did we, what kind of impression did we leave with that? The 10 of coins is all about it. So this card, when it shows up, it's not speaking to your future. <laughs> this is interesting. It's not speaking to your future past. It's speaking to your now in what will become your future. And then when you look back on it in hindsight, are you going to feel fulfilled by what you see? So what are you doing now that is fulfilling you in this moment? And then at some future time, at some <laughs> random moment, as you look back and you look back on this aspect of your life, are you going to feel fulfilled by it? If the answer is no to that, uh, or you're feeling less than fulfilled right now, then you know you could be, then what slow, steady, progressive steps can you take today to change that, to turn that around for yourself? Our next card is <laughs> the lovers. Back again. So it's, it's about making those heartfelt choices and decisions. And this is something that's been coming up consistently for us here in the cards because the core of the lover's card is all about making choice and decision that has us following our heart and that's not always so simple. We've talked about it. We've talked about it in recent days that it's very easy to say, oh, well, just follow your heart and sometimes that is a complex process. Though I feel intuitively as I look at this card today, the lover's card in particular, I feel that the slow, steady, progressive energy that is present here, that is creating the fulfillment that we're celebrating here in the now and will celebrate in the future is very connected to the decisions of now made in heart space around the lover's card. And 
I also feel that this is now. This is how we are loving ourselves. The love language we're speaking to ourselves in self-relationship is creating this ten of coins situation where we can upgrade but needs upgrading because, you know, maybe we haven't given it the kind of attention, whatever it is, that it deserves. And now we know, hey, if I look back on these moments in my life, will I feel as fulfilled as I dreamt that I would, right? <laughs> so we're getting we're getting an opportunity to have a snapshot of looking back on this time now and what we can do right here, right now with slow, steady effort to create a frequency, celebrate, live, love, a frequency of energy that will pay reward forward. Mm, all done in heart space. I also feel that this is a message that heaven touches earth right here, right now. And how are we celebrating that? Or are we ignoring it? Are we allowing ourselves to be distracted by other things, other stuff? Hmm. Let's take a look at that and reinvest in the reward of now so it continues to pay reward forward. And then we have, oh, she's back again. <laughs> Our beautiful Empress. Yes, I love that she's here. And she feels like a warrior today as I look at her. Uh, yeah, she feels very warrior-like to me. Why is that? <laughs> because she's taking down a tower. Oh, how beautiful. All right. Well, here's our divine feminine showing up in the form of the Empress. She's all about vibrant, vital, abundant energy. She's almost always about to give birth to something. <laughs> she is the mother of the charioteer. So uh, she is a dynamic force and she gives birth to dynamic force whenever we see her card. And her dynamic force is taking down a tower, which means that she's making way for preparing for what she's giving birth to. Mm. So the choices that we're making, look at these three major arcana, lovers, empress, tower, right? Uh, let me back up here. The decisions that we are making in heart space right now, these are our seed thoughts. You know, this is co-creation right here in the lover's card, really kind of creating what the empress incubates upon or gestates on, right? And this, <laughs> the tower could be seen as a bit of labor right now. We could be laboring to bring something through to our foundation that is all about the reward that we intend, put our attention upon and celebrate in the now that continues to pay that energy forward for us. So doing the work of the tower now intentionally and deliberately will serve us at a much later date and time in the form of the 10 of coins. Hmm. And we will get there in our own right way, in our own right divine order. There's no rush, rushing this process. <laughs> yeah, there's a bit of laboring going on for sure because here we now have the five of swords. Fives and tarot, as you know, are unstable energies. The gift of their instability is the ability to bring stability. So this tower next to this five, that's no joke. That's no coincidence whatsoever. We're kind of duking it out with an energy. Now we came out of the weekend reading under that Pisces moon energy that had stirred everybody's emotional cauldron. And we've moved into an Aries new moon and now we're ready to get busy. You know, we're coming out swinging. That's exactly how Aries would want it too, right? <laughs> Pay close attention though, because in the background here, I feel this is a nod to the death card that we saw yesterday, is the horizon. You know, on the death card, we saw, it was Sawyer's path that we used for yesterday's. So we see a ship sailing into the horizon. So here we have a person walking into the horizon. That to me says off that death card, we've arrived. And, you know, we're continuing the journey by foot on land. We're no longer in need of the ship, right? 
though we're still settling some unstable energies. And that could be something out of the debris field here on the tower, because when you take the tower down, you can see what was behind the walls. And now we're potentially dealing with that energy, though it brings more stability. Coming with our five of swords is the 10 of swords. Fantastic. So it's another 10. This is all about fulfillment. And ooh, let's come back to the five because this card is called the fallen master. The master gets up after maybe a period of recovery here and removing all 10 of those swords. But the master gets up and walks on to a new horizon. And you see that that's already happening here in the five halfway to 10. So we were already in motion, in momentum with what the Empress is giving birth to. So fantastic for us. It tells us that we never did linger in the debris that came down from the tower. Perfect. We didn't go into some ego story about it, even though we were tempted to in that Pisces moon energy. Instead, we got busy with that energy and came out swinging in the Aries new moon. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So coming with this is, look at that. Six of wands, victory, success. Yes, confirmation for us. This is homecoming to our own heart space. Were we able to follow our heart in light of all the complexities that come with that? Comes with that? Yes, the answer is yes. Were we able to give birth to what we've been incubating upon? Absolutely yes. Was it easy? No. <laughs> Was it unstable? Yeah, for sure. But it created a personal victory for us. And we're noticing there's an energy of notoriety on the Six of Wands. So we are noticing uh, how we journeyed through this aspect, this challenging aspect that maybe showed up a lot over the weekend in the emotional turmoil that was attempting to clear and did eventually clear. That has created success, harmony, balance for us. So the remaining question here would be, as the first part of this, uh, or the first card of the body of the reading being the Empress, where does she end up in this journey coming through all of these cards? You can't ask for better than that, the Ace of Cups. What is she giving birth to? The Ace of Cups, a divine and cosmic gift of love, bliss, joy, happiness, and overflow. And what happens with that overflow? It turns into the Ten of Coins. That is truly an awesome sight in the tarot cards. <laughs> now, while I was shuffling, uh, I thought I had all the cards picked. They had all fallen out. And then um, I got called away for <laughs> something else. And when I came back to the table here, there were two extra cards laying there. So let's find out what those are. We've got the Knight of Wands. Well, you have to love that. So more movement, more momentum, but it's creative fire and passion, using our skill and our talent, being optimistic, enjoying the journey. So while we may have had some unstable, uncomfortable moments, took down a tower here or there, waded through or went wading through the debris field, we've landed in the Ace of Cups and we're going to journey onward in a passionate and creative way with, look at that, Nine of Cups. That was in yesterday's reading too. So this is all about making our dreams come true and sticking to our commitment within self-relationship for what we hold in heart space lovers to stay with it, maintain it, nurture it, take care of whatever it is, whatever our dream, our goal, intention is is the empress in incubation. This has been our incubation period. She represents that. And while that part of the journey may not have been simple, it has paid this kind of reward. So now, not only do we have the Ace of Cups to the power of nine on overflow, fulfillment, dreams coming true, answered prayers, we have the Ten of Cups when we add the Ace, which is yet another equivalent to the Ten of Coins. Mm, very nice. Okay. 
Angel answers. They're throwing themselves out of the deck. First card is communicate clearly. <laughs> yes, I feel this. I feel this so strongly. Communication is quite key at this time. And uh, I said it when we pulled it last time, and I'm hearing it again from my guides. Assume nothing. Ask questions. Check in. Uh, be very clear with your words and be certain that you've been understood. Ask, you know, just ask the question if you don't understand, but then offer an opportunity to who you are speaking with to ask questions of you. And then we have let go. <laughs> okay, so you know these are answers to your questions, but they're also confirmations for you. And they could be a fresh message. But let go is the tower, the five of swords, the ten of swords. You've already come through this. And if there's a story attached to that, it's time to let the story go. Because you're being blessed with so much here. The empress, the ace of cups, the lovers, the ten of coins. And good momentum in the knight of wands and the the knight of coins as well so let go of any attachment to a story and then here's a card we rarely ever see unlikely and what i feel here is a connection to the tower the five and the ten of swords there is a tendency if we stay attached to soothing the ego staying attached to a story and soothing the ego at the same time the question I feel in that, are we likely to do it? No, we are unlikely to do it. My senses will recognize it if we start to. <laughs> okay, and we'll make changes and shifts. We'll accommodate that and move on. And then, no need to worry. No. I like that this card keeps showing up. All right, our affirmation for the day from the Super Attractor deck, we have the universe powerfully responds the instant I realign with love. <laughs> yeah, see, if you find yourself lingering and it's unlikely you will remain there, you'll realign with love. <laughs> and you'll have powerful responses because of it. Thank you, as always, everybody, for watching. Peace, love, joy, and happiness to each and every one of you. Bye for now and namaste.